and welcome back to Sydney Twitch Live coverage. And what we're uh, looking at today is personalized and recommendations. And joining me today is uh, Luke Hargraves yeah. and uh, Gabe, my co-host. Hi. Hi, nice to meet everyone. <laughs> okay, so today what we're going to dive into is really uh, recommendations, personalization, and how we're seeing that uh, in the market. Uh, yeah, sure. So, so there's a number of customers, very large customers of AWS that are doing personalization. Uh, a couple of ones I'd like to go through are the Netflix and Domino's. So particularly with Netflix, so you've all probably seen when you're looking at movies, uh, when you're coming up and want to choose which movie you want to see, you'll see a list of recommended movies that you might want to watch. So that's an example of personalization and recommendation. Uh, second one is actually a, a project that we worked on last year, which was with Domino's, and that was around the right sort of messaging, sending things to people that they actually want, rather than sending people sending messages mean, to people yeah, that like they might not want. Yeah, like promotional messages. Exactly, okay. right? So, so sometimes you'll get messages that you might not actually really need, and that can actually harm your brand more than actually help it. So, yeah. Okay. So, you know, personalization and recommendation engines are something we've heard customers talk about for a long time mm -hmm. um, and I think they're quite difficult to build you know it seems like everyone we talk to has you know struggled with how to put one of these together what are some common problems that you might deal with in personalization yeah actually there's quite a few and it's sort of the reason why it's taken so long to do this uh, one of the ones I think is custom models so being able to host your own custom models um, when you're actually building something specific to your own I guess use case that's a pretty big problem the other one is real-time personalization. So if you need to do something straight away, as in a change in one of your products, then you might need to uh, update the recommendation engine to do that. Or if I was just buying, uh, or sorry, watching really short clips, yeah. uh, and you want to give me a, a relevant one to watch next. Straight away, yeah. yeah. So okay. that's a really hard, that's an actual harder problem than it looks. Right, so, yeah. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. And then there's uh, cold starts, for example. So cold starts are when you don't know anything about your, your customer at all. So that's when you've just sort of onboarded a new customer. So How first time at the that? website, first time. might have signed in, yeah. don't know anything about me. Exactly, okay. exactly. Um, and there's a really interesting one which I, I quite like, it's called the popularity trap. So what that is, that's when you have uh, items that are popular and you suggest them to users, but it's not because they actually want it, yep. it's because they're just popular. So that's not really personalization, right? So that's, that's called the popularity trap. Okay. And the final one is trying to scale out what you're doing with personalization because what works for one person or one user doesn't work for 10, doesn't work for 100, doesn't work for 1,000 or a million or so even more. So. Just talking about popularity trap for a second because yeah. I'm just yeah, putting yeah. my like, machine learning hat on and I'm wondering, mm. you know, when we're training machines, uh, machine learning models, yeah. we're only as good as the data we have. And so exactly. if the data happens to just be biased towards this one popular thing, yeah. Yeah. it may not be a predictive enough input, right? And that, that's exactly. why we have to be careful and in, in not just say, just because it's really popular for most people, mm -hmm. it could be skewing the results. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And that's the reason why machine learning is used for this particular problem. I mean, there are straight linear algorithms you could use, yeah. straight easy sort of choice-based choice stuff. Uh -huh. uh, but machine learning, particularly neural networks, are really good at making those decisions. Okay, so but that sounds complicated. It's super complicated, yeah. So it's more it's more to do with the, the number of the different kinds of processing you put on top of the data. Yep. Um, that makes it more and more focused on what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. So I guess, you know, we've heard about the, the problems that are going on in, in this space. Um, I've talked to customers myself where they're asking us about how mm -hmm. to solve this problem. Um, you know, what have we kind of done at Amazon in the past and, and how are we helping customers solve this problem now? Yeah, sure. So, so at Amazon, obviously, we've got 20 years of, of doing this. Amazon.com. 20 years of experience. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, and so basically what we've done is we've taken those particular models and offered them up to customers. So the biggest, one of the biggest, uh, I guess, requests that we had from customers was, can we do what you, what you do? How can we do that? So and is it, it really the models hard. that we're offering up or the algorithms no. to so that produce yeah. those models? Well, that's interesting. That's a really good point. Um, so basically, we have the algorithms that we're, that we're offering up as a service. Yep. But you put your data in and you said, and by the way, that data stays in your account. It's, right. It's you own this your, data. You own. We don't see it. Yep. It's secure in your S3 bucket. And then what happens is well, you use that data to then create what we call a solution yep. based on these recipes okay. that, we talk, we, that we call So them, I guess right? one important yeah. point you're kind of emphasizing there is we actually yeah. train this model on your data personally for you. Exactly. You're not using a common model that all customers are using That's where right. you're giving them their, your data to kind of help them with their own personalization. No, this, this is very, very particular to your own customer data. Okay. And that's actually one of the things that we talk a lot to customers about is the fact that the differentiator here is the fact that you have data 
that you 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 know is not actually being used right now. So right. yeah, we're really useful. And if we talk through. Um, you know, before we kind of, I guess, get into our solution for that, mm -hmm. can you talk through the steps that someone would go through to actually build a recommendation engine? Like, what, what would you actually do? Yeah, sure. So in, ter in terms of personalized, what you would do is you, obviously, you would get an AWS account. And then or you even before, uh, before, even before that, right, let's yeah. just say generic. I, I, yeah, sure. you know, yeah. Before we talk about what, how AWS helps customers do this, yeah, yeah, I yeah. just say, I have this problem. I want yep. to make a personalized recommendations yep. of X for my company. Yeah, sure. What are the things I need to be able to handle and do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, you'll need to have a, a large enough data set to get good results. Obviously. So what you'll need is you'll need to have people who can, you know, sort through the data that you have. Yeah. So you can find, essentially, what you really need to do is identify three main problems. Okay. Have a, yep. have a really really clear goal about what you want to do have three main top problems and have a thought about how you're going to iterate, do it really, really quickly. That's that's the mindset you have to have to start with. Okay. Once you've got that mindset, then you can start identifying the data that you have. Can you support it? Can you try it? Can you test it? Um, now, traditionally, what you would have to do, unfortunately, is you'd have to be testing on top of a lot of different machine learning, I guess, frameworks, right? Like, you might be using Cafe, you might be using MXNet, those sorts of things that work for different... Well, how would I even know which one to pick, right? Well, I, need, exactly. I need to have some exactly. experience to know which frameworks and algorithms are better to bear exactly. against certain kinds of problems. Yes, and so and you I need might not have that expertise. Exactly right. And I suspect, exactly. like, what we've heard from customers is they don't really know what to pick, right? So they've sure. just been experimenting, and by the time exactly. they talk to us, they're like, I've tried this, I've tried that, yeah. I don't even know I have the right data, like, and right. I still don't have any recommendations. No, exactly right. And it really does take quite a lot of work to do and a lot of background. So this is where machine learning specialists or engineer, data engineers, you know, those sorts of people, they're the ones that can do all that. Yep. Um, so taking all that knowledge and being able to package it in something that developers can use, because I'm a developer, um, is actually really good. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how, how does AWS make this problem space easier for people now? For all the developers out there watching yeah. who say, I want to yeah. make better personalization recommendations, yeah. um, well how, now, can we, how can we help? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, so now it's, it's a service that sits behind an API, essentially. What's the service called? It's called Amazon Personalized. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a real term. Like it's, it's, it's a helpful name. It is a helpful name. It's easy to remember. Yeah. Easy to remember. Okay. But it's the real-time real personalization and recommendation service. Okay. Yeah, and it and requires no machine learning experience. We have a question. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Uh, don't drink and deliver, bro. Oh, don't drink and derive, bro. That's a nice username. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Can they use this data to identify trends that haven't even cemented themselves into existence? Yeah. Okay. So that's a really, really good point. This is this is almost part of the popularity trap, right? So, some of the like, if we're talking about, I don't know how how deep technically should I go here? Uh, go go deep. We'll, we'll, go deep. We'll pull you back. Can you, you, you can translate we'll for me, right? We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. The users will tell yeah. us if they don't. Like yeah. It. Okay. So so for this reason, we have uh, an algorithm or a recipe called the hierarchical uh, neural network, um, and what that does is that basically gives you. Um, a number of different layers to train your data on, and that's not just looking at whether or not data is is you know recent or whether it's actually been, I don't know, um, someone hasn't bought a shoe for like a year right. and suddenly they come back and they want a, a cat. Like, how are you going to know that, right? Right. Um, so what this is doing is this is trying to make predictions based on more than one, I guess, uh, yeah, more than one input. So we're talking about what people usually do. We're talking about what that person has done and what lead-ins work. So. And the way that works is that early on, as a customer, we might have it as the popularity sort of matrix, which is basically like, okay, we know a little bit about you, we know a bit about how, how you'll work, so we're going to suggest mostly popular items, but with a bit extra in it. Okay. Okay. And over time, what will happen is that will build up. So data will okay. build up and it will get so more the, and more the, accurate. So the exciting so thing like, about this is we can yeah. use sparse data, right? Like yes. a lot of things yeah. I've done in machine learning just require yeah. so much data, so much mm -hmm. manual kind of interaction. Exactly. And yet here we can use sparse data and mm -hmm. just enrich it with a little bit of things that we know, like popular objects or yeah. popular for your age group or something profile based. Yeah, and, and it's surprising how, how, how little amount of data you need. So we just need like a thousand data points. To Tell you, dig up. into that a little bit because I yeah. was going to say, it sounds like you're almost tempering my expectations, though, to say, which is fair, right? To yeah. say, 
we can try to per, try to give you helpful recommendations yeah. when we don't have a lot of data. Of course, it will always be better with more data. Yeah. Like yeah, like yeah. you said, but yeah. tell me. So you said with a thousand data points. A thousand. Data it's surprising points. what you can get. Can you unpack that statement a bit yeah, more? Yeah, A sure. thousand sounds like a lot of data points to me. Yeah, yeah. So this is so this I is. I might only have five hundred right? customers in most of the things I try, but right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so yeah. This this is actually interactions. So the way personalized works is you'll have the the users that you have the products that you have and the interaction with those products. And that could literally just be the time that they went on the page or the time that they bought the product, for example, right? Yep. And so all you need to do is be capturing those sort of data points and you'll be surprised how so quickly like there's more data than we think we have. It's amazing how much you have. Okay. You'll be surprised okay. how much you have. We yeah. have another question from the, the viewers mm -hmm. uh, from last week in AWS. It says, mm -hmm. how does it not eat itself? You bought a pie, you should buy more pie. Yeah. You want to buy underpants? No, you will buy pie. Yeah. <laughs> pie sales are up across the yeah. board. Yeah, yeah, Rinse no, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's that that's that's what I mean. It's not that that's that's you've basically exactly described the popularity trap there. Yeah. So that's exactly that. It's I like think okay. there's actually examples online where you can go and look up recommendation engine fails. And there's yes. things like that where yes. it will recommend, you know, different things that you've already bought, or you get into the popularity trap where you just recommend the same like weird kind of item to every person. Exactly. Exactly, exactly, and that, that, and that is the, the sort of popularity thing we have. Okay. For that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, we can train on sparse data, we mm -hmm. can uh, build this out. Uh, what about deployment? You know, so mm -hmm. one of the hard things for scale is works with one customer, got to do, yes. do a thousand customers in real time. That's right. What does yeah. the service do for that? Yeah, so, so when you are ready, to, so when you have the data that you, that you, that you want to basically put into the personalization engine, yep. mm -hmm. you'll create a data set, you'll upload the data up to that data set group. And then what you'll do is you'll get a recipe, and you'll get your data set group, you'll put them together, and create what we call a solution. Okay. And then that solution then can be deployed um, via Personalize as an API, and then you can call recommendations or search, search personalizations from the API itself. And, and what does the actual data structures look like? How do I need to yeah. format my data in order to send it to the server? Yeah, no, that's a good question. So, so at the very minimum, like I was saying, you have you need the the product, the user, and potentially an interaction, like a timestamp. Yep. Okay. But then you need to have a schema of that data. Right. So that's a JSON schema, uh -huh. and you just upload the schema along with the data, and then it'll know how to interpret it. Do you have any personal examples of you know when when or I mean, from you or from someone you know who didn't yeah. have a background in in this type of work yeah. who we put personalized in their hands and said try it out and yeah. how you know in X minutes or hours or days they were able to do Y yeah. solution? Can you give me an anecdote? Yeah, like, that? like so, well, I mean Domino's is the perfect example okay. for that, right? Yeah. yeah. So so we had uh, last year when when the product was obviously being developed, we had Domino's as as a as a launch partner at reInvent, which is really really great. Um, so their team was the marketing team. It wasn't a machine learning team. It wasn't a you know a developing team. It was yep. literally a marketing team, right? Okay. They had some specialists in there, but not a lot. I think that calls yeah. to the fact that you know you can put your normal data that you've already got in your data lake or somewhere in your data yeah. warehouse from the business side in. You don't need someone to like you know exactly. do this hands-on munging of that data. Yes. Well, I mean, yeah. There's there's obviously you don't need a lot of that specialist. It work. sounds like That's you just exactly need to right. format it into a pretty simple format. To upload yes. To. Yeah. So there's, there's a little, there's bit, a little bit of work there, but not as much as you traditionally would have had to do. Okay. So, yeah. And, and, so and they were able to yeah, do, get something going. Results. Yeah, so three weeks. Took three weeks, three weeks. From, from nothing from start to, to finish. Start to finish yeah. being, finish we, being, they built a model, a yeah. solution, they yeah. used it yeah. to get recommendations to that's do something. Right. And so they actually did it in production. So what they did, and that's one of the great things about, about this is you can do it straight away in production. That's um, phenomenal time. Yeah, it's, three weeks. it's amazing. So what did they do? They yeah. used, the marketing team used their model to decide yeah. how to send a promotion to certain individuals? Yeah, so they had segmentation, uh, which was using Amazon Pinpoint, and then they added personalization to that segmenta segmentation. Uh -huh. This is a marketing talk. But essentially what that meant was they had a group of people they would send it to, and they added personalization to that group, and then did an A-B test there, and okay. they got much higher results with the personalized group that they did. A couple of examples, they had, say, 30% uh, increase in the time it took for someone to actually open the notification. Oh, decrease, decrease, sorry. Right. Decrease, yeah, increase. And then they also had um, uh, a thousand higher conversions than they did from the actual test group. Yeah, okay. so you, you could say that it mm. delivered results. Yes. <laughs> you could, oh, see? Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that's a good okay. takeaway. Hey! <laughs> this has been a very exciting we chat. Didn't We've only got about <laughs> one minute left. So, yeah. you know, if people want to get involved in this, what do they need to bring? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what skills do they need to have in the house? How do we yeah. how do we get them into personalized and, and helping out in their own yeah. projects? Sure, no problem. So you just need to have, to know your way around AWS just a little bit, and then you just you ha need to have an AWS account, 
and then just jump on. Uh, you need to be part of, like, you apply to be part of the, the preview, but that'll okay. be coming out really, really soon. And then you just jump into the personalized console and start going. So it's available by a simple API. You mm -hmm. don't need ML experience. Nope. Uh, get out and use Personalize today. Thank you very much for joining no us. No problem. Thank Thanks you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay yeah, tuned. Yeah. We have more coming up.